Hello everybody, welcome back. It's been a wonderful week, it's been a great day. What a beautiful day we have with us today too. We're learning all about saddling the horse, the horse's equipment, bridling the horse, and we're gonna get Cowboy's gonna be uh, one of our stars here today that we're gonna be using as our friend to uh, saddle up. <clears throat> we have a couple of different saddles and bridles and equipment. Now the horse's equipment is what we call is their tack. Their tack, it's spelled T-A-C-K. So a horse's tack, uh, there are different all these sizes here. It's a bigger saddle, smaller one, which bigger horses or smaller ponies, you need a smaller saddle. It, it is very important that the saddle fits the horse correctly because every horse, pony, size, shape, their withers, their back, um, is all very different. It's all different if you look closely at it. So fortunately, they make many different types of saddles and um, sometimes the front of it is just a wider part in here. Uh, this is what we call is the, uh, the gullet, gullet and the horn and the seat. It's one of our bigger ones. Even what goes underneath the horse's belly. This is called the cinch. So again, there's all, there's, there's a variety of types of cinches that you uh, learn to use for certain horses so that they're comfortable. And uh, bridle, the bridle is what we need to put on the horse for being able to control them and direct them. So there's many different, again, types of material that you can use. Uh, there's either the real, there's leather, there's synthetic leather. You can see there's different, uh, types of man-made, uh, artificial round reins, the long reins. So it's a little bit of your personal preference as well as working with your horse to what works for them. Now with the bridle, this is the piece that does go into their mouth and there's different, this is what we call is the bit. And there's different types of bits that you work with the horses and find out what, what works for them so that they're comfortable and feeling good about it. And that takes a lot of time and, and training and knowing, but here's one here. This is what we call is a snaffle. There's another one here that we call is the, here's a curb. This one's curb, it's a straight bar. Compared to this one, longer shanks on here as well. So this is the bit and here's dots. Remember we met dot last time, here's little dots smaller needs to fit her mouth because her mouth is just smaller than the bigger horses another one we use is what we call is a, this is actually called a tom thumb bit longer shanks still that uh, piece in the middle that that moves like so and then another one that we use on some of them is what we call is a hackamore or a basil and there they actually is not it is not a bit the bit does not go into their mouth their nose goes through like so. And so they're actually feeling the direction and the pressure and the information that we want to give them by the pressure that's um, on their nose. So we can talk a little bit more about that as well. And then you just work with all sorts of different things with the horse, what feels good, what's comfortable to them and how they're responding. And you finally find out what's the best thing for them. A little bit about their equipment. We could probably spend a whole session on equipment and types and so on, but we would like to get saddling cowboy so we can get going for our ride. So again, walking up to him. Now I even know, even though he's standing this way, that cowboy can hear me. I'm looking at his ears. He can see me. So he knows we're here. Hello, cowboy. I'm coming up to see you. I'm gonna just give him a little pat. He knows that I'm here. And I'm just going to ask him to move over so that uh, it's going to work for the recording. <laughs> all right, so here's Cowboy. Hello, how are you doing? You all ready for a ride here today, my friend? And we have already groomed him. Remember that last session, the full grooming that we did? So he's now nice and clean and ready to go to put his saddle on. So the saddles too that I'm showing you here, folks, these are the Western saddles. You may have heard other terms that there's also English saddles. There's other saddles depending on different disciplines of riding, but these are the Western pleasure riding saddles that we use here at Circle R. And the first thing we want to do is actually put blankets on the horse's back 
And the blankets do have a, a purpose of it uh, helps to, it's comfortable for them so that it makes it more comfortable with the saddle. Also, you can wash the blankets. It's pretty, it is difficult to wash the bottom of the saddles, but it's more even comfort for them. The first blanket absorbs the sweat because they will be sweating a little bit uh, when we're riding. You can kind of think about it like your socks in your shoes. We wear socks in our shoes to absorb the sweat and for comfort and we can wash our socks. So here we go with our blankets. Uh, and this is how we do it here at Circle R. And we want the saddle to be sitting on their back. Um, this piece, as I talked about last time, is the part, this is what we call is their withers. And it's actually, I can press down and feel the, the bone there. And the saddle is gonna sit kind of right in this area here. So we wanna be sure to cover that with the blanket. We want it even on both sides. So there's a couple different ways that you can do this, but I'm going to fold it in half. So I know I want this piece here to really be coming down right down the middle of Cowboy's back. So I'll set it there. And I'm gonna, when you're moving around them, you just wanna kind of gently move around them. I'm quite familiar with this action. So it's um, not new, it's regular consistency and repetition and they surely know what's uh, going on here when we're starting up the saddling. So it's not always true, but about the front of your blanket, you can think about, you want it to come about in the middle of his uh, shoulder here. Um, I'm gonna make sure it's all nice and smooth and flat. And I am actually gonna walk around to the other side, cruising around to the other side, as long as I keep cruising around, he knows that I'm gonna come around. And looking at it here, make sure there's no wrinkles or there's nothing caught underneath or anything like that and i can see that it's uh, pretty even on either side and our horses are used to sometimes you can just put your hand underneath and i'm actually feeling the other side with my hand ensuring that it's 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 equal on each side we're going to cruise around again cowboy you're all good here and what we put on is actually what we call is a saddle pad you can see it's a very thick pad again for comfort um, for um, on their back and we like to use the blanket first of all because again the blanket is much easier to wash and keep clean we do also have to wash these off and on but uh, it's a lot easier to keep this part that's going to be right up against their skin nice and clean as well so this saddle pad has a piece here and that is going to go over the top of the withers there and then side leather pieces away just to help with the wear of it so again it's just nice and Gently setting it down in the spot that I want to have it, like so. And I've got the blanket and the pad. All right, time for the saddle. This is Cowboy's saddle here. When we're looking at the saddle to pick it up. I'm going to have one hand under the front, like so. I'll eventually have a hand on the back. We've got the saddle horn, the saddle seat, and this back part here is what we call is the cantle of the saddle. So there's a couple of pieces there for you. Now to set it on uh, cowboy here, I'm going to put everything up and onto uh, this, the saddle seat and then gently set it down. Now you might be noticing I am working from the horse's left hand side. I'm on his left hand side, so I look the same way the horse is looking and it's the same left hand side. And there's no really safety reason why particularly to be doing the left-hand side, although it's just consistent. On the left-hand side is where you start. The horses like regularity and repetition. And that all stems back from the left-hand side of starting on the left side and getting on on the left-hand side. Way back in history was it really was when the soldiers had a sword and they were using their horses um, at that time. For them to get on, they had to get on the left-hand side the sword was on this side for them to be able to swing their leg around and get onto their horse's back. So it goes back in history why the left hand side is the side that the horses are uh, most familiar working around. So we are going to, this is the stirrup. That's where your foot's going to eventually go into. I'm going to put it up onto the saddle and this is what goes underneath the horse's belly. Okay this is what we call is the cinch. You'll also see that it's sometimes called the girth and kind of has a rubbery neoprene on it that again is very comfortable for the horse as well so i'm going to put everything up so it's out of the way here 
And I really want to be thinking about just lifting it up and gently sitting it down to his back. So here we go. And I just lift it up like so. Here we go, cowboy. Just gently sitting it down. Just don't want to plunk it. It might startle them, might scare them. Just always want to have those nice, calm, easy movements when you're working around them. Around to the other side. Here we go. Being a good boy. Remember, you can always talk to your horse. Tell them any little story as you're working around them. So I'm now going to put everything down on this side here. You can see these are what we call the saddle strings that are on the saddle as well. I'm making sure everything's straight. Paying particular attention to looking at the cinch here, making sure that it's not twisted, which could happen. So it's all nice and straight, so it's going to be very comfortable for the horse as well. You have a good boy standing here nicely. Cruise around the other side, gang. Here we go. You have to watch the tail sometimes. They don't ever mean to swish you, but they might because if they have a fly. And it doesn't really hurt, but um, sometimes it can kind of startle you. So you watch the tail as well when you're going around and around. Alrighty, we're back on this side. Now before I do start um, with uh, tightening up the saddle, looking at it right here, what I'm going to do is actually even lift up the blankets and the saddle at the same time, just to make a little air pocket there. Again, it's for comfort of the horse. So here we go, I'm going to lift up the saddle. I lift up the blankets at the same time. You can just imagine there's now a nice little air pocket in there is what we call it. Um, so that when I tighten it, it's not going to maybe pull down and the possibility of it being uncomfortable for the horse. So we want our horses to, to truly always be comfortable. And we're going to go ahead and attach it to the horse. So gonna put the stirrup, that's what your foot goes into. This piece of the saddle, here's some more, is what we call is the fender. Protects your leg from the buckles uh, that are on the stirrup. And this piece in here is what we call is the jockey. All the way around is what we call is the skirt. That's the skirt of the saddle. Put the stirrup out of the way for me here. Now this piece of leather here is what we call is the long latigo. And I'm going to let Cowboy know I'm going down his leg. And I'm just gonna reach underneath. And I now have the cinch there. So the knot that we do is what we call is the four knot find the end. I'm going to go down the loop on the cinch. I'm going to make sure it's straight. I don't want to have any twists in here. So that's nice and flat and straight there. Go all the way to the end. Straight. I'm going to go down the D-ring here. And I'm just sort of slowly bringing it up and through. I'm going to go back down. So it's through two times through the ring there. Like so. Making sure it's all nice and neat. And this is when I do, I'm gonna snug it up to the horse's belly. Again, this really does not hurt them. It's just going to be, I'm gonna give it another little pull. How do I know how tight to make it? Generally, I can get about four fingers in between the cinch and the horse. I can easily get four fingers in there. I can kind of pull it. Um, Cause you really don't wanna have it too loose. You don't want the saddle to slip, maybe obviously, but if it's too loose, and it rocks back and forth, it actually could make sort of like a little bit of a sore there, like a blister. Like if your shoes are too big, you get a blister. So there's that happy, not too tight, not too loose. So you'll learn what that is after you saddle a number of horses. Take the end. What we're gonna do, this is called the four knot. I'm gonna go out to the side here with it just kind of feeding it through. Loosen it up a bit and feed it through. Okay. So just tighten up a snitch for the feed. I've come out to the side. I'm going to go across. This is called the four knot. So, does that look like a number four to you there, folks? Four knot. I'm going to go all the way out to the end. I'm going to come up to the other side here. And I have made a loop. I like to say the rabbit goes down the hole and you just give that a tug there and that's what will hold your saddle on for you gently put the stirrup down like so now we get to put the bridle on so here's cowboy's bridle we have the reins that's what we will be controlling uh, cowboy with is the reins 
Uh, we've already gone out the top is what we call is the crown. This is actually the cheek pieces here because they lay against uh, his cheek here. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take the reins and I'll bring his head over here so you can see him a little bit better. Come here, cowboy. Come on over here. We're going to demonstrate. Yeah, good boy. So I'm going to put the reins over his head first of all, keeping myself kind of organized here. Now, what I want to do is I'm almost getting my shoulder close to his cheek here. And I've come right underneath giving him sort of just a gentle holding. I don't have a real hard hold on, but just gently holding him like so to keep his head down so that I'm able to put the bridle on. Once I do that, I'm going to hang on to the cheek pieces here like so. Okay, and I'm, I'm sort of doing two jobs, holding the head down, having the cheek pieces. I'm leaving my other hand nice and free and available to steer the bit up to their teeth there. And when they open their mouth, sometimes you get to take your thumb, which is available. And I'm gonna show you, I'll put the bridle on and then I'll show you what their teeth are like. So there we go. When cowboy opens, beautiful. My other hand pulls up gently, but I'm having to hold it here or else it would fall out. And then it's one ear forward, like so. And I'm gonna reach over, put the other ear forward. And the bridle is on. The bridles also have what we call as a throat latch. So this is the throat and you don't want it too tight. You don't want it too loose. So putting it on like so. You want to have at least sort of three, two or three fingers worth in there. It's just, and that's how you do up there. So there's a nice space in there. So it's interesting with the horse's teeth and mouth that the bit is actually laying where there is no teeth. There are no teeth right in here. I think you might be able to see it. Um, and there's no teeth there. There never will be teeth there. That's what we call is the bars of the mouth. Yes, they do have front teeth, and I'm just going to gently uh, lift open, lift up Cowboy's lips there so you can see them out. You are being very good. They don't really mind me doing this. They might not want me to do it all day long, but just a little bit of opening up the teeth. That's generally, they use their front teeth there to eat, you know, pull up the grass, pull up the hay, chomp it down. No teeth here, and then they have teeth way back up here. These are like their molars are back in there, so their jaw is very long. And that is what allows us that when we're riding, they just feel the pressure on the bars of their mouth, the gentle pressure, which we are then able to uh, give them the direction that we need. Good cowboy. He's sort of fixed up his little hairdo here. And we do leave the halter on. We do that just because we're then, I'm able to clip them up here or be able to lead him around with the lead rope if necessary by leaving the hold on him there. I think we're all ready for the ride. We're ready to go. Who wants to go for a trail ride? That is what we are going to do next week, everybody. So please be sure to join us. Thank you, Cowboy, for being uh, such a great demonstrating horse here. And I'd say we're pretty good. We're all saddled up with our Western saddle ready to go. Thanks a lot, everybody. See you soon.